The Capital Wasteland is full of some of the most horrifying and deadly creatures you will find throughout the Fallout franchise. In today's video, we'll be exploring some of the worst of these monsters and mutants that Fallout 3 has to offer. If you like Fallout, then make sure to subscribe because there will be a new Fallout video posted here every other day. Also, please like the video, it would really help us out. You've had some experiences in the wasteland. You know how to deal with a raider or two while traveling with various caravans. It seems routine at this point, and even if you get into a fight with some muties, you're sure you have the firepower to deal with them. But tonight, something else stalks the campfire, honing in on your scent and creeping through the brush. The Death Claw. What? You thought the Death Claw would be further down the list. Well then, you haven't seen anything the Capital Wasteland has to offer yet. But don't get it twisted, the Death Claw is nothing to be trifled with. In the Capital Wasteland of Fallout 3, Death Claws stand out as some of the most formidable and terrifying creatures. These mutants, bearing a resemblance to Jackson's chameleons, are large, agile, and incredibly strong. Despite the harsh and desolate nature of the wasteland, Deathclaws are surprisingly common in this region compared to the west coast. Deathclaws are spread throughout the capital wasteland, often establishing nests where they protect their eggs. One notable event involved a squad of Brotherhood outcasts who were attacked by Deathclaws, resulting in the death of all but one soldier. This survivor, known as Branch Tender Linden, later joined the Tree Miners. Additionally, the Enclave conducted experiments on Deathclaws, attempting to control them throughout cybernetic means to create obedient soldiers. These creatures possess a hunched humanoid build with reptilian features, granting them exceptional speed and strength in close combat. They lay their eggs in dark, sheltered locations, fiercely guarding them until their offspring are mature enough to survive on their own. Young Deathclaws stay close to their parents until they reach maturity. In terms of gameplay, Deathclaws are some of the fastest and most powerful adversaries. While they're not as widespread across the Capital Wasteland as other creatures, their presence significantly impacts the player's exploration and travel decisions due to their formidable nature. Moving on to a creature that might come as a surprise to some, but to others, well, they already know the stakes. Now we aren't talking about the garden variety of ghouls here. Even though they have made the metro tunnels a horrifying experience, they are mostly cannon fodder to the more experienced wastelanders. And no, we aren't talking about the glowing ones either. Feral ghoul reavers are a type of ghoul that appear in the Fallout 3 add-on, Broken Steel. They are significantly stronger than other ghouls and are clad in what appears to be metal armor made from various scraps. Their skin has a distinctive appearance, often bubbling and emitting radiation and dark green smoke. These creatures are among the toughest enemies in the game, boasting more than twice the durability of a sentry bot or deathclaw. They are also very agile, capable of quickly closing the distance to their target and delivering powerful melee attacks. One of their signature abilities is the ability to throw pieces of their own irradiated flesh at their enemies. These projectiles explode on impact, causing significant damage and potentially crippling limbs. What sets feral ghoul reavers apart is their high level of perception. They can detect enemies even when they are using stealth technology, such as a stealth boy or Chinese stealth armor. Additionally, they exhibit a unique behavior when in water, appearing to walk along the bottom rather than swim which just feels very creepy to think about. Ultimately, Feral Ghoul Reavers are extremely dangerous opponents in Fallout 3, combining durability, agility, and unique abilities that make them a formidable threat to even the most experienced Wastelanders. You probably already know where we are going with this. A mutant so large and formidable, they can make the literal ground shake beneath their wake. Behemoths, you might even call them. In Fallout 3, the super mutant behemoths are towering, fearsome creatures standing at about 20 feet tall, making them the most significant threat among the super mutants, at least lore-wise. Gameplay is a little different. Despite their immense size and power, there are only five behemoths in the capital wasteland, though reports of sightings continue among the Brotherhood of Still. These super mutants are the oldest and largest of their kind, having lost the ability for intelligent speech and now only communicating through monstrous roars. They typically wield an oversized fire hydrant as a weapon, using its once buried pipe as a handle. 
In the absence of a weapon, they rely on their immensely strong fists, which are capable of delivering devastating blows. Behemoths were makeshift armor crafted from scrap metal and car parts, often adorned with cages made from shopping carts on their backs. These cages are used to hold captured humans whom they either consume or subject to a process called dipping. Additionally, they use car doors as shields and the heads of their victims can be seen hanging from their bodies as gruesome decorations. The behemoth at Evergreen Mills has a unique appearance without armor, fighting solely with its bare fists. For players defeating all five behemoths in the game unlocks the achievement or trophy, the bigger they are. No wastelander in their right mind would ever want to come face to face with a behemoth. Let's say for example, a wastelander has a choice to pick between two paths. The path of the left has a massive hulking behemoth blocking the way. The one on the right, a smaller but more hunched over super mutant. A little darker green than the rest, but that's no problem, right? That leads us straight into our next mutant. Maybe not as scary looking as a Deathclaw or a Behemoth, but make no mistake, they are far deadlier. In the Fallout 3 add-on, Broken Steel, the Super Mutant Overlords are a variant of Super Mutants that are even more powerful than Super Mutant Masters. They are depicted as aged and are notably harder to defeat. Interestingly, they appear to be undergoing a transformation, evolving towards the size and strength of behemoths. You would then think to yourself that they should surely be weaker than a behemoth, right? Well, despite their apparent lack of speech, super mutant overlords demonstrate intelligence by wielding energy weapons. While they are sometimes seen leading groups of other super mutants, they are more commonly encountered in pairs or even alone. In combat, super mutant overlords pose a significant threat. They receive a substantial damage bonus of plus 40 when using a tri-beam laser rifle, which can penetrate armor effectively. Additionally, when they attack with their unique version of the super sludge, they receive a plus 25 damage bonus. Interestingly, when equipped with an assault rifle or a Chinese assault rifle, they use a one-handed pistol animation. So now imagine a mutant that's far smarter than a behemoth, but gifted half or more of its strength and durability. Even more, they wield big guns that will shoot any wastelander dead. Fast. The cherry on top? They're usually in pairs. But if you manage to survive, well then you might get something interesting. Defeating super mutant overlords can yield valuable loot including stim packs, mini nukes, and purified water, making them lucrative targets for players seeking resources. Last on the list today is a creature that probably many of you haven't encountered or knew was even in the game to begin with. For most, it's an incredibly rare sight to run into and definitely one you don't want to. For others, I've seen they can't get away from. Living walking tanks that want to chop you into little pieces and then eat you. Albino rad scorpions. Rat scorpions in the Fallout universe are mutated from the North American Emperor Scorpion, which were commonly found in pet stores before the Great War. Contrary to expectations, their venom became more potent and deadly after the mutation, rather than diluted. While they are typically considered nocturnal and sensitive to light, rat scorpions can be active during the daytime in the areas they inhabit. Visually, they appear very similar to regular scorpions, with thick, mottled, dark, bluish-gray carapaces. Their poison glands are used in crafting the dart gun. According to Enclave Field research, rad scorpions are believed to be mutated emperor scorpions, although further study is needed for a precise identification. The research indicates that the rad scorpion stinger and venom glands have enlarged. The neurotoxins they administer now affect the potassium and calcium channels of their victims. While the rad scorpion is considered a minor threat when encountered individually, it can become problematic in larger numbers. Although rumors suggest the existence of larger rad scorpions, the researcher dismisses these as exaggerations. Except it's indeed no exaggeration. Albino rad scorpions in the Fallout universe are a variation of the giant rad scorpion. Visually, they differ from their counterparts by being pale white with pink joints and eyes rather than having a dark bluish gray appearance. Despite their similar size to giant rad scorpions, albino rad scorpions are much more formidable. They can both deal and withstand a significant amount of damage, are highly maneuverable, and possess stingers that contain an extremely potent venom. In terms of resilience, albino rad scorpions are exceptionally tough, boasting significantly more hit points than most other creatures or non-player characters in the game. Their durability is surpassed only by super mutant behemoths. 
but they have a unique trait. These creatures have an ability to slowly regenerate health when exposed to direct sunlight, similar to the effect of the solar-powered perk. Like regular rad scorpions, albino rad scorpions have no specific weak points, but their legs can be targeted to reduce their mobility. They can be found near areas where giant rad scorpions spawn and may appear in pairs or after fast traveling. Interestingly, well-prepared and high-level players may encounter more albino rad scorpions than regular rad scorpions due to their distribution. Overall, albino rad scorpions are regarded as one of the toughest adversaries in the wasteland because of their potent poison, speed, durability, and overall ruthlessness. So what do you guys think? Which of these creatures do you find the deadliest in the capital wasteland? Let us know in the comments below. Also, you can follow Unsung King on Twitter with the link below. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like. Have a good one, guys. See you in the next.